What's up people, Orsa Course here, coming at you with another Paragon deck build. Today, we're gonna be looking at Fang Mao. Haven't played with Fang in a while, so I figured I'd give him some love, do a video for him. So, let's go ahead and start off. So, Fang is Fury Order, and we're gonna start him off with the Warlord. That's 65 physical damage, 100 damage bonus once you get the Prime buff, which is all good. Fang is kinda that assassin jungle type of person, so you want him to hit hard, you wanna be a threat. So that's why I go with the Warlord. <clears throat> consumables, I keep his consumables fairly light. I went with the health potion, two strike tokens. Um, I don't even go with the with the uh, Harvester's Key early on. I focus on um, you know going with the damage, going with the little health uh, regen there, and clearing out camps as quickly as I can. Maybe going for a gank if I can get level two pretty quickly. But at three minutes, I go back, and usually the first card that I uh, that I grab, and that's it for the consumables, is my Brawler's Key. <clears throat> now, I know some people discard their uh, Brawler's Keys at a certain point in the game. I usually keep mine the whole game, but that's uh, a preference thing. You can do whatever you want. But uh, I usually go Brawler Key first, and I have that with uh, three strikes. So the Brawler's Key it allows you to place Harvesters uh, for three or three seconds, right? That's how long it'll take. And then 6.5 physical damage, 75 mana, and 6.5 physical damage. Damage, sorry. So <clears throat> that's what I go with. Um, the Brawler's Key, I think that's a pretty good key. If you have some uh, more rare ones or epic key, you might want to swap it out. Like the Lazarus Key, I think it's pretty good, but it's up to you. Uh, the Brawler Key works just fine for me. So now let's take a look at the equipment properly here. Now this isn't in any particular order. Build how you think is necessary. Like I go with the Brawler Key first, but if you have, um, you know, a jungler on your team already who's getting the harvesters, you may not need it. So, you know, it's all up to you. But let's go. I start off with the fast flash fire piston. And that has 6.5 physical damage, 5.5 attack speed. And once you fully max it out, the other 5.5 attack speed. I do this with a vicious kinetic and a two uh, strikes. So the 22 attack speed, 13 physical damage. Now, I have another flash fire piston. But this one has a vicious kinetic and two major strikes. This is usually the, uh, the one of the the flash fire piston that I equip first because it has more damage. So I usually go this one first, and then my second will be this one, the one with the two strikes. Now with those right there, you got a good attack speed going. You have some good attack going. Once I have that, <clears throat> now here's the rust breaker. Now here's another card, and this is arguable because this one on my Greystone, I go with Rustbreaker first before anything. But since Fang is jungling, I usually go with the Brawler Key. But this one's a good card to have early on because it has that physical pin. Now I equip this one with two major strikes and a major pierce. Usually I go with a minor pierce, but for Fang, I go with a major pierce. And this one gives 13 physical damage, 6.5 physical damage once you fully upgrade it, then a 16 pin. So all together, I can come up with 64 pin. Now, that's not bad. That'll be piercing through uh, a fair amount of armor. Uh, you can always build more pierce if you need to, but uh, usually the only person who's gonna be building a lot of armor is uh, the tanks, usually. Like your carries will build some armor, but it's usually not crazy. So that should be sufficient. Now the Guardian's Ward, this one is completely optional. If you wanna use it, by all means. If not, you know, you can swap it out. I use it because I like having that vision in the jungle, especially if I can invade their jungle. This is a good card to have on your fang. <clears throat> so 6.5 physical damage, 100 health, and of course the most important part, the Shadow Wars, that's what you want. And once you fully upgrade it, you get the 6.5 physical damage, and I equip this one with 3 strikes. Now this one is optional. If you don't want the Guardian's Ward, you can go with this. If you want the Guardian's Ward, you can, you can leave offensive maneuvers out. But this one, if you think you need more defense, like if, you're, if you want to be in the middle of the action, I go with the offensive maneuvers. Uh, 6 crit. And then uh, the passive 44 physical armor and 44 energy armor against basic attacks. Then I equipped it with two wounds or with three wounds. So I give him a little bit of crit. Usually I go with the Guardians War because I think it's more uh, viable. But this also has its place in the game. Like I still use this on my Greystone fairly often, and it's a very good build. So it's really up to you. But for Fang, though, I usually go with the Guardians War because I play him more like an assassin. So he's not going to be in the fight for super super long, and he has a pretty good escape. So down here, these two cards are optional. I build it depending on what the enemy is building. So if they have a very tough 
physical damage dealing team i'll go with this card right here the tempered plate 22 physical armor 100 health 44 uh physical armor and i equip that with a divine health a guard and a health now I want health over the guard because this one gives you pretty good guard as is and I don't want to overdo it on my guard. So I get a pretty good physical defense going in the health. Now of course if there's energy heroes giving you problems then we just flip it. We go with the 22 energy armor, 100 health, 44 energy armor once you max it out and then health, health, barrier. So that's what I have for my fang so far. This deck does pretty good I think. It's a nice balance between attack, but it also has some good defense and good vision if you need it. Now let's go ahead and take a look at his moveset. Here we go. So Fang Mao. So his basic attack is called Sweep. So melee basic attack dealing 50 physical damage. Now this one is just his basic attack. It levels up as you level up as always, so you don't have to stress about that. And a uh, thing to note when he attacks, it also does a little cleave. So you know, just like Kalari, Grux, whoever. So just keep that in mind, he does have some cleave damage. Conversion shield. This is one reason I like uh, Fang. He's very versatile. So he has this uh, conversion shield. shield. So Fang gives himself a uh, plus 75 shield that lasts for two seconds. So that's nice. He gives a little shield, gives himself a little extra survivability. Uh, you know, I use this when I'm trying to get away or, uh, you know, when somebody's with to hit me with something strong, like I see Gideon's meteor and I can't like dash away, I'll pop that shield, reduce the damage a little bit. <coughs> the reaping dash. So this is where, um, this is like his escape or his engage. I'll read it to you. It says Fang Mao throws out an image of himself. When it collides with an enemy hero or reaches a mass distance of 700 units, he will teleport to the image. The image deals 40 physical damage to all minions it passes through and a single hero it collides with. His next sweep attack within four seconds gains 10% extra damage. So very good for engaging, especially if they don't see you. You, uh, you do your reaping dash, get up on them, hit them real quick with that first attack. It does an extra 10% damage, then hit them with your ult. Yeah, you do so much damage to them. But it's also good at escaping. You know, if you get in over your head, go ahead and get out of there with that. Try to do it, though, if there's a way you can get on top of something. Because you can dash up. So, like, you can get up on a ledge or something. That's always ideal because it's uh, harder for heroes to get to you. But if you're running for, like, a Greystone or a Chimera, they'll still be able to jump on you. Or even Fang or... Uh, Rampage, but still most heroes or some heroes won't be able to get up there like a Sparrow or a Murdoch or You're getting chased by one of them. So, you know, just keep that in mind You can you can do this in like in the air so you can go up and all that good stuff Now hamstring I like this move alien attack that deals 60 physical damage and applies a hundred uh, Movement speed slow for two seconds. I like this move because it slows the enemy down So if they're trying to get away hit him with that hamstring and it helps you stick on them so he has the reaping dash which can close the distance, but he also has hamstring. So he's very good at sticking on the targets. Once you get on somebody, they're usually gonna get taken down if they unless if it's one on one. So keep that in mind. You have some uh you got some you got a pretty good kit for uh taking people down. Now defending towers and all that, not so much. Pushing lanes, nah. But for one on one engagements, for assassinations, uh Fang is good. Or even team fights too, he's good. So here's his oh, the earth shatter. Fang Mao slams his blade on the ground, dealing 325 physical damage to all enemies in the line in front of him. Plus 100 shield is granted for 5 seconds. So I like this. So his ult deals a butt ton of damage, but it also gives him a shield. So if you do do that in a team fight, rest assured that you have a little bit of survivability as well. Because you get that little shield, you still have your conversion shield, and you still have your escape if you need to. So I mean, Earth Shatter, very good move, deals a lot of good damage. So people, that's what I have for Fang Mao. Uh, let me know what you think if this helps you make sure to drop a like subscribe for more content i'm always posting videos i try at least a couple of times a week either live streams or videos like this um if you like the video make sure to share it out and anyway people this is orsa course we'll see you in the next video have a good one thanks for watching